What's up, future officers? My name is Tejas, and I welcome you all to this brand new episode of iLead. Today, we are looking at a bill which has just been passed by the union cabinet. It's called a Shanti Bill. What exactly is this Shanti Bill, sir? Is it a bill for peace, you might ask? See, it is a bill for peace in a way, but what it actually means, Shanti stands for Sustainable Harnessing of Advancement of Nuclear Energy for Transforming India. Okay, I'll just tell this again. Sustainable Harnessing of Advancement of Nuclear Energy for Transforming India. So, this is the full form of the bill. So, Shanti Bill pertains to what? It is something to do with nuclear energy. That is the first clarity which you should have. Now, after 1962, this is the biggest reform in the nuclear sector. Shanti Bill or another name for it is called as Atomic Energy Bill 2025 has been passed by the Union Cabinet. But sir, what exactly is this bill? What does it do? See, right now, if we see the nuclear sector, there are a lot of fragmented laws in the nuclear sector. All this fragmented laws, this Shanti Bill aims to unify and bring a comprehensive legal framework for this nuclear sector, thereby modernizing the governance, safety, liability and the industry participation framework. All of this it aims to modernize it. Okay, fine. This is all good. But under which ministry does it come? Does it come under Ministry of Environment? Does it come under Ministry of Science and Technology? Which ministry does it come? That can also be a question. See, it doesn't come under any ministry like that. It comes directly under the Prime Minister's office. Under the Prime Minister's office, there is something called as Department of Atomic Energy. So, this is a Department of Atomic Energy will have the sole responsibility of creating an independent nuclear safety authority. See, you told that there are so many fragmented laws, sir. All of that is fine. But what are the laws right now, today? What is the laws which are governing? See, there are two laws which you have to know today, right now in India. Law number one. Atomic Energy Act 1962. Law number two, Civil Liability for Nuclear Damage Act. So basically this act was passed in 2010. Now what is common in both these laws is that when it comes to the nuclear sector or nuclear energy, private participation is strictly forbidden. They will not allow private participation in nuclear energy. But the Shanti Bill aims a little different. It is encouraging private participation for the first time ever. It is encouraging private participation to come into nuclear energy sector. So, automatically, what would happen? It would bring in innovation. It would bring in investment. And we have a vision. That is, India has a vision of achieving 100 gigawatts of energy through nuclear sector by 2047. So, this bill is all the steps in the right direction for making that vision a foreseeable achievement. Sir, this is all fine. But what are the key features of this bill? What are the key features? Feature number one, opening of this nuclear value chain to private players. So private players can right now come, they can participate in the nuclear energy. It could be with respect to exploration, fuel fabrication, equipment manufacturing and possibly plant operations also. So in all of this, they are encouraging private sectors to come in. Second is they want to bring together something called as a unified legal framework. They want to merge all the laws bring about one comprehensive legal framework. Third is a reformed nuclear liability architecture. What is this reformed nuclear liability architecture? See, it's all about if in case there is any mishap, who should take the responsibility? There should be clear roles and responsibility and delineation of what exactly who should do when it comes to suppliers and operators. Whatever these norms are, it should be aligned with the global standards. It should be kind of the same. The next feature, that is the fourth feature, is an independent nuclear safety authority. So they, this bill, it aims to create an authority which is transparent, accountable, professional, and it kind of aligns with the global safety benchmarks. Next and very important, it is going to give a boost to small modular reactors. So with respect to research and development of the small modular reactors or by deploying them in industrial or grid scale decarbonization, the small modular reactors will come in very handy. In fact, the nuclear fuel, nuclear energy is one of the cleanest energies there is. So these small modular reactors will give an impetus in this direction. So overall, we can say that by 2047, achieving that 100 gigawatt mark and from the last 60 years, breaking that state monopoly by allowing private sectors to come in is the biggest significance of this particular bill. 
right now this reform is sure to bring investment and innovation both to this particular sector but what do you guys think do you think that because the private layers are right now coming into this nuclear energy field nuclear sector field do you think it will be more advantages to india or do you think it will be disadvantages to india whatever you feel even if you feel both please leave a comment below so i will be sure to come there and reply to your comments until next time this is tejas signing off thank you have a nice day